Good afternoon. Before we begin our worship, I just want to say a small little announcement about why we started so late today, as you might have noticed. The, um, our host church in Mayas was supposed to have a service outside today, but because of the weather, they came back in, which means we didn't get to get in and set up our, um, our equipment at our usual time. So please forgive our tardiness. Um, and the first lesson today is one about patience. Uh, <laughs> unintended. Now let us worship together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Eine Lesung aus der Apostelgeschichte. In Joppe war eine Jüngerin mit Namen Tabitha, das heißt übersetzt Gazelle. Die tat viele gute Werke und gab reichlich Almosen. Es begab sich aber zu der Zeit, dass sie krank wurde und starb. Da wuschen sie sie und legten sie in das Obergemach. Weil aber Lydda nahe bei Joppe ist, sandten die Jünger, als sie hörten, dass Petrus dort war, zwei Männer zu ihm und baten ihn, säume nicht, zu uns zu kommen. Petrus aber stand auf und ging mit ihnen. Und als er hingekommen war, führten sie ihn hinauf in das Obergemach und es traten alle Witwen zu ihm, weinten und zeigten ihm die Röcke und Kleider, die Tabitha gemacht hatte als sie noch bei ihnen war. Und als Petrus sie alle hinausgetrieben hatte, kniete er nieder, betete und wandte sich zu dem Leichnam und sprach, Tabitha, steh auf. Und sie schlug ihre Augen auf und als sie Petrus sah, setzte sie sich auf. Er aber gab ihr die Hand und ließ sie aufstehen und rief die Heiligen und die Witwen und stellte sie lebendig vor sie. Und das wurde in ganz Joppe bekannt, und viele kamen zum Glauben an den Herrn. Und es geschah, dass Petrus einige Zeit in Joppe blieb, bei einem Simon, der ein Gerber war. The Word of the Lord. Let us recite the psalm responsibly. I will begin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. A reading from the book of Revelation. 
I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Alleluia. alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered round him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify me to me, but you do not believe. Because you do not belong to my sheep, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all these, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This week I visited the Jewish Museum in Munich, and it's a wonderful and heartbreaking and a hopeful place, and I encourage you to visit if you've not already. You can hear stories from the different parts of town. Uh, even here in Harlocking, uh, there's an interactive map. And, and the stories are ones of resilience and strength and stories of, in a sense, dedication. And it's the Feast of the Dedication that I want to talk about. I know you've seen these... Um, one of the many artifacts they had at the museum were these beautiful menorahs or Hanukkahs. And you can see them that were used in synagogues here in Munich. And it's these 
This symbol that I want to talk a little bit about today, because it says the very first words of our gospel, it was the feast of the dedication. You see, after the death of Alexander the Great, his empire was split up between his generals. Seleucus Nicator, meaning uh, Seleucus the victor, was allotted the areas of Babylon, but then expanded to take control of Syria, parts of modern-day Turkey, Iran, Lebanon, and Israel. And they called this the Seleucid Empire. It was one of the last Greek empires, one of the last areas of Greek influence to resist Roman imperial expansion. In the waning years of this empire, when the Romans were pressing in from the west and the Ptolemaic Empire in Egypt from the south, the emperor, the Seleucid emperor, Antiochus Epiph Epiphanes, <laughs> I can't even say that five times quick, um, decided that the areas under his control just were not Greek enough. And maybe some of the, the the hardships they were facing were caused because of this. So he ordered that all the areas under his control worship the Greek pantheon. And this included Jerusalem. So in the portico of Solomon, the one that's mentioned today in the reading, idols, Greek idols were placed there. And it angered and upset many people, rightly so. But the last straw was when non-kosher animals, forbidden and ritually unclean animals, were sacrificed on the high altar. A revolt began. The Jewish people rose up. Under the leadership of Judas Maccabee. And this Maccabee is not a last name. It's a nickname. It means the hammer. Under the, in, under the leadership of, of Judas the hammer... The nation revolted, overthrew the Seleucid rulers, and this eventually led to a restoration of religious freedom in that part of the empire. Now, you might be wondering how this fits into this. The gospel fits into this very well, because after the Maccabees revolted, there was a need to rededicate the temple, the feast of the dedication. So they went and they broke the idols, they tore up the shrines, they washed the altar, and above the altar was a candelabra, not too different from the ones that you see today, except that it used oil for fuel. And the oil had to be of a special variety, blessed by the priest, made exclusively for the temple. When they searched the temple grounds, they found one small vial, sealed and consecrated, enough to last one day. Miraculously, it lasted for eight, giving the priests long enough to procure and consecrate more oil. And this is where our gospel begins today. Jesus walking in the temple during the Feast of the Dedication, it's what we know today as Hanukkah. This is a feast that celebrates the abundance and the provision and the grace of God. In faith, the lamp was lighted, and what should have burned out burned stronger and stronger and longer and longer. It was a feast about abundance, a feast about signs. A feast that celebrated how little signs of God's care, little tokens of God's grace, little symbols and omens of God's presence abound in our lives. So it was in this environment that people approached Jesus and said something like, don't make us guess, don't make us search, don't make us look any longer, don't make us figure it out, tell it to us plainly if you're the Messiah. And you can tell by Jesus' response that he was a little flabbergasted. What more must I do? I've told you, I've showed you signs of the coming kingdom, yet you do not believe. What more must I do? How many more signs do you need during a feast that highlighted the simple signs of oil not running out? People were refusing to see the signs of healing. 
refusing to see the little signs all around them. Or perhaps another possibility is that maybe they were looking for something else. Maybe they didn't want the little signs. Maybe they wanted another hammer. Jesus Maccabee, someone who, like Judas, would rise up and throw out the Romans with force and violence, just like they did those Seleucid uh, rulers years before. Many people assumed that the Messiah was going to usher in a new earthly Israelite kingdom. In fact, when Pilate interrogated Jesus, this seems to be his major concern. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If it was, my followers would rise up. So instead of a warlord, what Jesus offered to them was a shepherd. A shepherd. Someone to trust and follow. A guide, a comforter, a nurturer, a teacher, an example. But most importantly, perhaps... A shepherd is one that keeps you a part of the flock. Reminds you that you aren't meant to go through things on your own. Gently brings you back into the fold when you stray. So because we have the gift of hindsight, let's not make the same mistakes those people made when questioning Jesus at the temple that day on the Feast of the Dedication. First, let's look for signs of God's loving care around us. The signs are there. In fact, I guarantee you, God has been at work in your life this week. God has been at work in your life this week. God is working in your life, even now. Upon reflection, where have you experienced, perhaps unrecognized in the moment, the goodness and the love of God this week. Remember the example of that lamp burning for eight days. God's provisional goodness is always with you. Second, don't be surprised and disillusioned when God's provision doesn't fit your expectations. We often want God to solve our problems, but to do so in the way that we desire. But if we have faith, when we reflect on our lives, we can see how God was at work, even in the difficult times, often in the ordinary things, often through the ordinary people in our lives. I once had a spiritual advisor who told me, God is most at work in the person who is annoying you the most right now. So God may be surprising you with how God is at work in your life through ordinary people. Of particular note, although it's not a liturgical feast, today we're celebrating the good love of God that is so often seen in our mothers, in the gift of being mothered, the gift of mothering. In many ways, the beautiful and sustaining ways that people have offered motherly care to us, even those who weren't our mothers. It's just another sign of God's goodness and grace for us. We have to train our eyes to see them, train our hearts to feel them, train our communities to reverence them. So I'd like to end this service by inviting our acolytes to come forward. Um, Please come up here and each one of you take a a vase here uh, just as a sign of our love and appreciation for the mothers in our congregation. If you are a mother, would you please, or if you've a stepmother or if you've offered motherly care uh, in your life, will you please raise your hand and just as a sign of our thanks, appreciation and respect, uh, our acolytes will pass out some flowers to you. So go ahead if you're and we've got enough, so take more than one. 
<laughs> yeah, if you're in the choir, come on down. At the conclusion of our service, the, um, the flowers will be up here again, and I invite, uh, I invite those of the, uh, who are here to come and, and take some, if, if you wish, uh, because I'm taking the bus back, and it will be difficult. <laughs> difficult to take these flowers. So please come and take all of them that you wish. Thank you, Martin and Nathaniel. Now let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for our moms, for children, and for all the joys of family life. Thank you for sharing your love with us through our mothers or through those who have offered motherly care to us. Bring forgiveness and reconciliation to those who are estranged. Be with those who are grieving now because they have no mother or because their mothers are no longer with us here on earth. Be close to those who are struggling this day because they have no children. Be near to those who are sad because they are far apart from those they love. Let your love be present in every home and help your church to have eyes to see and ears to hear the needs of all who come. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Mark, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for the peace of the world, especially in Ukraine, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees and those who look after them, for prisoners and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for this congregation, those present in the church, those who are present on Zoom, those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Amen. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Please be seated. Just a few announcements as we continue our worship together. First, if you are visiting here with us today, we want to extend to you a special welcome uh, and invite you to join us after church in, uh, in the Gemeinde Zal, which is straight through past the restrooms uh, into the big room over there for coffee hour after the service. Uh, giving us a chance to get to know you better. Also, in the speaking of coffee hour, on the back table, as we're starting to uh, have coffee hour again this Sunday for the first time, um, we need some help with people who are willing to sign up and volunteer to, to help clean up after coffee hour. Uh, as this is not our building, we have to leave that room in, in tip-top shape, so we need help. If you can do that, the sign-up sheet is on the back table. There's also a sign-up sheet on the back table for those who speak a language other than English and German on the Feast of Pentecost when we celebrate our diversity and the diversity of God's good world. We're going to have a reading uh, where we share with all the different languages of our church. So uh, the sign-up sheet's back there if you speak a language other than German or English. Please do sign up on that sheet. Uh, in May, there is a, a Bible study on a Friday night the, that, that comes from our Jewish tradition. So you'll find information for that in your bulletin. Also, very importantly, the last Sunday of May, the, our host church, Emmaus, is, host, is having their confirmation services. Uh, so they're having a service uh, two times that day. And so we cannot meet here at our regular time at 12. So we're going to meet uh, at another church and the all of the there's a map and everything in there from may 29th in the bulletin so please consult that and don't come here on may 29th it's just around the corner a little bit uh to we're going to another church um i'd now like to invite our uh assistant treasurer graham to come and make a, an announcement about our uh bridge the gap campaign So our church and our community relies on the generous donations of time, talent and treasure from our parishioners. We're only what we are together as a whole community. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to talk to you about the treasure part today. So the church costs around 205,000 euros a year to run, just in basic operating costs, of which, as you can see from the, uh, the announcement in the bulletin, uh, around about 75% just over uh, is for the basics of clergy and buildings. Um, that sounds an enormous amount. It's 560 euros per day. But if you think that as a community, we think we're about 250 people that really belong to this community, that works out at about 2 euros 25 per day per person. And then it suddenly sounds more manageable and that's what I mean, that together as a community, we can thrive. As you know, the Church of the Ascension doesn't receive any revenue at all from tax taxes. We're entirely reliant on the generosity of our parishioners. We get over 75% of our income from reg regular pledges. But nevertheless, this year, we find ourselves with a shortfall against our outgoings of about 50,000 euros. We've sown the seeds of growth, and as we invest into the future, we can take down some from our reserves that we've saved in the past. But we're looking to try to bridge the gap uh, around to around 30,000 euros this year. The amazing news is that up until Friday, we've actually received 15,930 euros in donations, which is a great achievement, so thank you to everybody who has donated so far. So that gives us just over 14,000 euros left. And that equates to, amongst 250 people, about 15 cents per person per day. So hopefully this is something we can manage together. For those of you in church today, um, you'll see a form in your bulletin, um, which, if you're so moved, we'd be very grateful for any donations, any regular pledges or one-off donations. 
however large, however small, everything makes a difference. Um, please hand this in either to the offer offering plate uh, or to the plate at the back of the church or to the, one of the ushers after the service. For those of you on Zoom, um, please send an email to Kay, our treasurer, and Kay's email address is at the front of the bulletin. So all of the pledges remain strictly confidential. If you have any questions, please do ask me or one of the wardens or Dan after the service. Thank you very much.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift your hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the banquet of Christ. In his kingdom there are no outcasts. Wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome at God's table. I now invite you to join me in prayer with those who are worshiping with us online. Lord Jesus, as you promise to be with us in the bread and wine that is your body and blood, grant that we may receive you spiritually today into our hearts, minds, and souls. Stay with us. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you and have confidence in your loving care now and forever. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you've made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of eternal life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. One second, I just want us to say a special thank you and to note that Father Alan Sandlin, the, uh, in, one of our interim priests during the time period before I came here, is, has joined us for worship today and is in the choir upstairs. Um, he's not only a wonderful priest, but I hear that, you know, in choirs, church choirs, 
one of the most rare things is a tenor. So <laughs> we're especially glad to have you here today. I'm personally grateful for your ministry and for your wisdom and kindness and grace extended to me. So thank you for joining us today. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.